Hello and welcome to my top 10 planets and moons to explore in the early levels of Starfield. So this is planets and moons within level 1 through 25 that I find great to go wandering on and exploring. I do not feature any barren moons or lifeless planets. These are all inhabited by aliens and are absolutely wonderful for exploring. So if you're in between quests and you don't feel like doing any more questing for a bit and you just want to wander aimlessly, I've got the list for you and this is it. There are 10 breathtaking, beautiful planets that are vibrant with life and fun to explore. And this should easily take you all the way through level 25. These planets do feature multiple biomes and are an absolute enjoyment to um, wander on. So if you do enjoy this and um, want more content like this, please like and subscribe and I will produce. I do have two more videos coming on for the mid-levels and the end-levels as well. The first moon we're going to do is Kodos, Moon of Aquila. This is in the Cheyenne system, and it is a moon of Aquila. As you can see, we can see Aquila in the sky above us, and this does provide us with very lovely scenes and scenery. I will make note that this moon is not tidally locked to Aquila, as you can notice the moon slowly drifting farther and farther up in the sky. This planet features 0.4 Gs, so it will make for very easy travel if you do choose to go exploring on Kodos. It also does feature four different aliens that inhabit the planet, and it has four different biomes if we're discounting for oceans which aren't very explorable and is an absolutely lovely planet to go to and i would highly recommend exploring this one it's right next to aquila city which is going to be very convenient for you if you're exploring on this planet you'll have a city that is extremely close to where you're at so you'll be able to stop by in aquila and sell any um thing you do pick up and it will make for a, a lot of convenience while you're exploring these environments. But as we start exploring here, let's see what this planet does bring us. I do love that low gravity. It makes it very easy for us to travel on this planet in the planet's surface. And uh, there's some of the alien life. It seems to be shooting some kind of toxic substance at us as we're trying to traverse this terrain. So um, that will make exploration with on Kodos a lot more interesting. I will make note that the Free Star Collective quest line, the Free Star Ranger quest line, I should correct myself there, does actually bring you to this planet. And it does bring you to a, a, a very um, beautiful spot on the planet. It's a, a little island. So um, if you do the Free Star Collect or the Free Star Ranger quest line, it will bring you here. But this is um, a planet that is well-deserving of your exploration. And here's some gunfire coming up ahead. And there also looks to be a ship either taking off or landing in the background. Our 
our second place is also going to be in the Cheyenne system. This is a level 1 system, and in this is going to be Monterra Luna. This planet features slightly lower gravity than Kodos. It is 0.38 Gs. It does have a total of 7 aliens that are inhabiting this planet. As we can see, I'm already starting to engage them now. And there are a total of five biomes on this planet. And I will make note that the Freestar Ranger questline does take you to this planet, but it takes you to the other side of the planet, which does not feature that lovely gas giant in the sky that you've seen already. So I would absolutely say that this, uh, this moon is definitely worth exploring more than just what the Freestar Collective quest line takes you to. And we can see a lot of points of interest, a communication station. I don't think I've ever been to that before, so I'm going to go ahead and venture over in that direction. I will make note that this planet is tightly locked to the gas giant in orbits. Um, so th what that means for you, if you land on the side of the planet that does feature that gas giant, it will always be in the same spot of the sky. So make u utilization of that while you are exploring. And we do have a lot of different creatures here, like this flying raptor that is attacking me. And adoring fan took care of it for me. But let's keep on heading towards this communication station. Now, I will say the low gravity of this moon does make it a, a wonderful place to go exploring in because it travels substantially e easier in low gravity environments. flying raptors. They're mighty difficult to shoot those uh, ones flying through the air. Our next planet, or next moon, is going to be in the Tal Ceti system. This system is um, a level 10 system, and it's go we're going to be going to the moon Tal Ceti 8b, and this has a gravity of 0.57 g's, and it features seven different aliens and has five different biomes you can explore, and is orbiting this lovely ringed blue gas giant so absolute stunning views this is actually my favorite moon of the early levels to explore and i would highly suggest you do go there the creatures are absolutely lovely as we do head over to this civilian outpost and it features just absolutely stunning views the region we're currently in does not feature that much alien life, so it is relatively clear. But we do see over here uh, a nice little civilian outpost we can stop by. This is nice and interesting. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yes. And we're going to actually take off and check another region, one with a little bit more action going on. <laughs> and 
land as we cut to our next region here. Here we are, we're in a tropical jungle with the same moon above us. And we can see some alien life down below. What is it going to be? Looks to be there is a cage brain. And that is some kind of hunting mantis. I would absolutely highly suggest everyone go explore this this moon here in Telseti. This is by far one of my favorite, or my favorite early level moon to go exploring on. It has absolutely stunning views. It has a ton of different aliens for you to experience. And there's a total of five different biomes that you can explore in. The gravity is a little bit on the heavier side, but it's not too heavy. So we're able, still able to explore relatively easily in this environment. And as we're coming down the hill here, what will we find in this tropical jungle? Looks like there's some cage brains below us and they are herding along. Absolutely stunning and breathtaking taking scenes as you do explore on this moon. And wonderful jungles. And its host planet is absolutely stunning in the night sky. This, I will also say, is a tidally locked moon, meaning if you do find where the um, host planet is in the night sky, it will never change. You can hear more of those cage brains out in the um, evening. And look at what we're coming up here. It looks like they're um, batting some kind of hunting mantis. And as we end up this moon here, I think we're coming up to a, yes, it is a ship landing site. So this does, this moon does offer a lot of different points of interest and a lot of different events that will occur while you're on the moon. Highly recommend if you do have free time between your questing, do go and explore this moon. The next planet we're going to be looking at is in the Iridani system. This is a level 20 system, and it's going to be Iridani 2. And why are we looking at this system? We're going to be looking at this system because this is the same planet that was Reach in the Halo series. And I do want you to explore because I know there's got to be an Easter egg here somewhere for Halo Reach. But what does this planet feature? This planet does feature... Uh, 0.86 G, so it's a little bit on the heavier side. It does have a total of seven different alien species that are inhabiting it, and it has five biomes that you can explore in. As we can see, I'm engaging with a couple of the aliens, and we are in this wonderful little tropical jungle here. We can see some filters up in the sky. They look like jellyfish just floating up in the sky. I find that rather interesting and unique. We can see wonderful terrain, still able to negotiate um, travel relatively easily, even though that the gravity is a little bit on the hot, heavier side. And we're coming up on a point of interest here. I see some more of those aliens here. That looks like some kind of weird grasshopper. There's another one. Let's see what this point of interest might have for us. Here for 
Iridani 3. Iridani 3 is also a very fun planet to explore on. It did not make the cut because it does not have that many different biomes to explore. But it, it does have alien life on it. I believe there are only... Let's, let me check my notes on that one. There's only a couple different aliens on Iridani 3, but my god, it will give you some arachnophobia. So I would at least check that planet out and um, definitely explore this one a little bit further. wrap up this little tour of Iridani 2 here and move on to the next one shortly. <laughs> Definitely a planet to go exploring on. Next planet is going to be in the Piazzi system. This is a level 10 system, and we're going to be going to the moon of Piazzi 4C. This is an absolutely lovely moon. As we can see, it's got another gas giant in the sky here. We got that crescent gas giant, and we're looking and we're traveling through some kind of carnivorous forest here. And I will let you know, the planet does feature 0.48 Gs, so it travel's going to be relatively easy on this moon. It has four different alien species that do inhabit it. One of them, as we can see here, is that cage brain. And we have these pack animals that are attacking that cage brain. It has five different biomes for you to explore. These cage brains are as these are hundred page brains and will be aggressive to you immediately. Stunning views from this planet and this carnivorous forest is completely immersive and feels exactly like how I would expect a carnivorous forest to feel like on a distant moon somewhere in the future. Hopefully the clouds clear up and we can get more visibility on that moon. Um, the host planet again. With the relatively low gravity on this moon, travel is going to be relatively easy and it will be um, easy for you to move pretty fast throughout these forests. can see some filters up in the sky there, looking like jellyfish. It does look like that moon is coming back out from behind the clouds. And look below us, we can see those pack animals fighting the cage brain. Let's just sit and watch for a bit. is absolutely breathtaking as well. Wonderful terrain we have here in this uh, carnivorous forest, and 
it is very good for exploring. Highly recommend this as well. Our next place is going to be located in the Lunara system. This is a level 25 system, and it's going to be Vesta. This planet is steeped in lore. In 2307, the Free Star Collective started farming on Vesta, sparking the colony war. Now, this place does have a just wonderful vibe about it. With these just absolutely strange terrain and these creatures which look like rhinos almost running around and it you see these things they look almost like coral sprouting up from the ground it's very much giving me morrowind vibes and it's why it's one of my favorite places in the early game now vesta has relatively light gravity at three g's it does feature seven different aliens, and it has six different biomes on it. And we can see one of the creatures right there. It looks very much like a scorpion. This thing will crawl on the ground and spout up on you. But as we can see, this is a, a very lovely place. We can see filters up in the sky. Those weird rhino things. And those scorpions as well and then there's four other alien species that exist on this planet which aren't seen in this video for you to find of your own on your own but i just absolutely love the landscape of this place and i do like the lore that it was involved in the colony wars and this will give you a little bit of a taste into the um, higher levels and kind of how it will feel so this is a wonderful place to explore on and it just features tons of biomes tons of alien life uh, it's not a moon so it doesn't have the pretty nighttime skies that those uh moons of the gas giants have but it does make up for it with its alien life and its absolutely bizarre and strange landscape with those coral things spouting up out of the ground which makes me wonder is this an ancient ocean that dried up a long time ago but who knows absolute tons of fun on this planet itself so if you're looking for a planet in the level 20 to 25 range this is a wonderful place to stop absolutely does give me Morrowind vibes with it. Weird coral-like structures sprouting out from the ground. Um, Morrowind was probably one of my favorite BGS games. It was the first one I played and it kind of does have like a, an emotional place in my heart. Absolutely stunning. Stunning planet to land on and it really does uh, look like an alien world lots of alien like creatures like that is just absolutely creepy it's like a face hugger from aliens there our next place is going to bring us to the system Ida Cassiopeia. This is a level 20 system. And we're going to be going to Cassiopeia 4A. Now this is a moon of a gas giant, much like the other ones, giving us that stunning backdrop. And as we can see, there is tons of action going on here. You can see aliens all over the place here. These weird beetle things that kind of behave like buffaloes. are tons of fun. In that absolutely stunning gas giant there. The 
the alien life on this planet will bring you tons of challenges and will make exploration absolutely uh, amazing and enjoyable. Cassiopeia 4A does feature pretty low gravity at 0.46 Gs. It does have four different aliens that do reside on it, and it is um, it has four explorable biomes. And here we come across some a flying variant of an alien. Um, this is a bird of some kind. lovely decisionist for us to kind of look through in search while we're exploring. This is another moon that is just absolutely breathtaking with its views. It is quite enjoyable to explore on and see what the procedural generation does have to offer. With its relatively low gravity, travel should be pretty easy on this planet, and you should be able to move it quite fast if, if you so desire. And as we come up here, coming up to a point of interest I've never seen before, it looks like some kind of electrical substation. Uh, I'm gonna check it out, but I'll have the, the video cut out in the primary um, building itself, so no spoilers. Oh, it looks like that guy got crushed by a rock. Our next place we're going to go is in the Vega system. This is a level 25 system. This is Vega 2C. This is also orbiting a gas giant. And we can see these weird sloth-like creatures, these giant sloths, immediately exiting the ship. This is an absolutely stunning and beautiful planet. And it has absolutely tons of alien life for you to have fun with. A little bit about Vega 2C. The gravity is going to be a little bit higher at 0.72 Gs. It does feature seven different aliens that do reside on this planet, and it has four different biomes that you can explore. Let's see another alien creature there, some kind of pack hunter of some sort, and more of these slot creatures roaming around. There is an absolute ton of these creatures. This is a lovely decisionist forest here. As you can look and observe, you can see the trees kind of, they don't grow exactly like the trees do on Earth. We can kind of see that the branches kind of curve and form these weird spirals, which is, makes it very interesting. Despite its higher gravity, you sh should still find easy to travel around.
some of these creatures might pose a challenge to you. Those sloths seem to be very low level, but a lot of the hunting creatures are of a higher level and could probably pose a challenge to some newer players. And the sights and sounds of this world are spectacular. host planet, we can actually see that there are other moons to Vega 2. As you can see on the screen there, there was another moon orbiting. It was very faint, but you can see it as well. Absolutely lovely landscape. If you wanted to come here and explore, this is just a wonderful place to go ahead and dive into some of the procedural generation and see what that does have to offer. ships land here this is a it like I, I said this is a wonderful moon to explore on and it's absolutely enjoyable so if you're looking for somewhere to come in between questing and if you happen to be around the level 25 range this would be an excellent candidate to do some random exploring on if you're getting tired of questing you will need to take a little bit of a break system we're going to visit is the Obram Prime system and we're going to go specifically we're going to go to Obram 1 and this is a lovely planet here it does feature these weird giant funguses that look like morel mushrooms and lots of other aliens as well a fabulous fan uh, landscape that is quite enjoyable you can see a lot of hills and mountains a little bit on Obram 1 the gravity is 0.5 g's, so it's relatively light gravity, so you should have a pretty easy time traveling around. It does feature nine different aliens that do inhabit this planet, and it has three different explorable biomes. So it might be lacking in that spectacular view of a gas giant, but it does make it up in the diversity of alien life on this planet as we go ahead and climb up this hill so we can get a better vantage of what we're looking at with the landscape. Weird egg things sprouting up, and also those weird things that kind of look like morel mushrooms. This is a an absolutely uh, interesting world to be in, and it does feel alien. The landscape is absolutely lovely. We have these hills all over with a, a large flat area in the middle. And there are plenty of points of interest between here and there. This also is a, an absolutely spectacular place for you to come and visit if you are in between questing, you want to take a break from that, and just do some random wandering on a world and see what that procedural generation does have to offer uh, as far as gameplay. So you'll be um, enthralled by the 
tons of different aliens on this planet. Not that much in this particular biome, but a lot of the other biomes do offer a lot more alien life. does have light, lovely sound effects on this planet. Sounds almost like birds chirping. And because of that lower gravity, that 0.5 Gs, we're able to cruise around relatively fast and get around the planet pretty quickly, which might not be possible in higher gravity environments. And the last place we're going to be checking out here is in the Olympus system, which is a level 10 system. And it's going to be Nasoi, which is a planet on that system. So no more moon here. We're at a planet itself. And this one features some wide open scenery. A little bit of detail about this. This does have higher gravity at 1.04 Gs. So travel's going to be a little bit slower with that higher gravity, but it makes up for that in its diversity of aliens. It has eight different aliens that do inhabit this planet, and there are five different explorable biomes. As we venture out, let's see what the procedural generation has to offer to us here, and um, it is looking fairly promising see structures all over the place and these little things that look like badgers with horns despite there being uh, earth-like gravity here we're still able to travel at a relatively fast pace What I spotted up ahead is a deserted colony war barracks. I'm going to show a little bit of this content, but I'm not going to show all of it. Uh, this is a absolutely amazing point of interest for you to play through. It is tons of fun. The replayability on this point of interest is probably some of the best. You can approach it from several different angles and uh, play through this several different ways. But this is a very challenging point of interest. As you can see up ahead, when I engage in combat, everyone sees me and starts firing at me. So, Naseyo does offer a lot of different aliens, it has those five different biomes you can explore, and it also seems to generate wonderful points of interest for you to go ahead and play through as well, like this uh, deserted colony war barracks. I would absolutely suggest you come here and do explore this planet. It is right beneath the floating casino. That casino is uh, or in orbit above it, which is also a fun playthrough if you do want to experience a zero gravity gunfight. Uh, but the planet underneath it is more than worth exploring. So I would definitely hit this up if you're feeling a little tired of the quests and you need to take a break from that and you want to just do some endless wandering on a planet somewhere.
So just to close this up, this was a list of my uh, 10 favorite places in the early levels of the game to explore. This uh, did not include any barren moons. I think they're lovely to visit, but um, as far as going into depth and really detailed exploring, inhabitable planets uh, offer just substantially more with the alien life itself. Uh, upcoming videos, I'm going to be doing the mid-level, same format. It's all going to be um, planets inhabited by aliens, and then I'll do the high levels as well. If you did like this, please give me a like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it, and it gives me motivation to make more content.